Good evening and welcome to Grace Church Cathedral. This is evening prayer and a meditation for Thursday, May the 25th. If you'd like to follow along, evening prayer begins on page 117. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, We sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 105, verses 23 through 45. Israel came into Egypt. And Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful and made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They worked his signs among them and portents in the land of Ham. He sent darkness, and it grew dark, But the Egyptians rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land was overrun by frogs in the very chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of insects and gnats within all their borders. He gave them hailstones instead of rain and flames of fire throughout their land. He blasted their vines and fig trees and shattered every tree in their land. He spoke, and the locust came, young locusts too many to number, which ate up all the green plants in their land and devoured the fruit of their soil. He struck down the firstborn of their land, the firstfruits of all their strength. He let out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going, because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering, and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked, and quails appeared, and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock, and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord, this proverb shall no no longer be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sins shall die. Yet you say, why should not the son suffer for the iniquity of the father? When the son has done what is lawful and right and has been careful to observe all my statutes, he shall surely live. The soul that sins shall die. The son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer for the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked man turns away from all his sins which he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. 
None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live? But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and does the same abominable things that the wicked man does, shall he live? None of the righteous deeds which he has done shall be remembered, for the treachery of which he is guilty, and the sin he has committed he shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die for it. For the iniquity which he has committed, he shall die. Again, when a wicked man turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is lawful and right, he shall save his life. Because he is considered and turned away from all the transgressions which he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel say, The way, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. So turn and live. The word of the Lord. So as we draw to a close of the Easter season, we get a reminder of the work that is set before us as people of the resurrection, as people who are living into God's kingdom. What Ezekiel is referencing here is actually quite astounding, because if you recall from an earlier part in Scripture, uh, it, we're reminded that the Lord God will visit the iniquity of parents upon children's children up until the tenth generation. Um, what Ezekiel is saying is that actually this, is, this has changed. This is something new. The Lord God is purposing something new. That each person's iniquity, each person's righteousness is their own. And that they will, you know, the, the sins or the consequences of sin will not be visited upon generations down, down the line. That each person is responsible for their own well-being, their own uh, righteousness, their own iniquity. If we take that to heart... The bottom line lesson is that we have to be disciplined about who we are and what we do. If our relationship with God is something that matters, we have to be disciplined about it because we will bear the consequences of our own lack of discipline or our own discipline. Um, that we are trying to strive for greater things in our own lives, not for the benefit of next generations or to you know, uh, benefit the generations that have come before, but to live in our own time, in our own way, as faithful people doing the best that we can serving God however we are able. And again, what is the desire? Ezekiel reminds us of this. What is the desire that God has for us? That we turn and that we live. The entire purpose of, or the entire beginning of Jesus' mission was to proclaim repentance, turning back, turning back, turning away from those things which lead us to death and turning towards those things that lead us to life. The entire ministry that, that Jesus did, all the way up through his death, his resurrection, his ascension, turning away from death and turning towards life. And so that's a wonderful reminder to us as we end this season of Easter that our job is to be disciplined about living towards life, living towards joy, living into the idea of the resurrection that God has given us a, a new life and that God wants to invite us even further, even deeper into life. That's God's ultimate purpose for us. Not that we should, you know, slip away into death, but that we should turn and live. And so I think that, again, our job is to embrace that, and embrace the disciplines that go along with new life. Living into the resurrection is who we are called to be as people of the resurrection. And there's a great and a deep joy about that. So, again, when I say the word discipline, I hope that it's not um, 
it doesn't automatically conjure up in everyone's mind, oh, the idea that this is hard work and it's awful and it's just not fun. It's no, it's, you know, anything that's worth doing, any, any life that's worth living has got to be disciplined or else it's just willy-nilly, whoever can do it, can do it, whatever, it doesn't matter. The discipline of joy is what we're called to, to, to follow. So, go follow it. We continue with the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear, and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the silver light of the moon guide your steps in the darkness and the crickets sing you on your way home. And until we meet again, God keep you in the palm of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.